Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's Thursday, the 15th of March, 2007, and the markets just closed, and we had a very boring session. I should have uh, put those videos about the paint drying up there today um, instead of on uh, Tuesday. Anyway, the Qs were down 10 cents. They lost about a quarter of a percent. And you can see after yesterday's recovery rally, which actually came on bigger volume than the prior day's sell-off, which was encouraging to see, um, but today we had lighter volume and the market basically is just marking time here. Tomorrow we've got options expiration day and it's typically a day where there's very little volatility. Uh, that's kind of been the trend over the last couple of years. That's why I do these uh, online classes at MarketWise and I've got another one tomorrow. So if you're interested in learning more of the concepts that I talk about, uh, go to MarketWise.com to learn about that. But on these uh, cues, we've got the prior level of uh, support about 43.30. 43.35. It did become resistance um, late last week. We had that subsequent little sell-off down there, and then we had a very violent recovery yesterday, which uh, indicates some maybe some short covering. But it made a higher high right here in the uh, mid-afternoon. And now looking objectively at this 10-minute chart of the Qs, you can see that we've got a mess in here. All these moving averages are crisscrossing back and forth. There's no real consensus. So that's what kind of leads me to believe that we saw a shakeout. Uh, now the market's trying to recover in here. We trapped some bears in there. The market's trying to recover. And this level is back to what looks like uh, support once again near 42.65 or so. So keep an eye on that level of 42.65 for potential sh support. And I think clearing today's highs, maybe we'll get our, uh, a retest of that resistance we saw at about 43.35. So it's really tough to say exactly what the market's going to do here because when you look at, for instance, this 30 minute time frame, it's just a choppy back and forth action. And to me, when you have moving averages crisscrossing like that, it represents indecision. And where there's indecision, uh, you know, when, when in doubt, stay out. So I'm going to continue to offend some people by saying that we should be mainly on the sidelines. But I think it's the prudent course of action. The market uh, sent us a warning sign with this gap down and subsequent sell-off. Now it's trying to heal itself in here. We've had a, uh, a lower low and that came with a, uh, a divergence on the MACD that said that the sell-off wasn't as severe right here. So that kind of might pave the way for a potential recovery. But when we look at the daily time frame, we've got this bigger level here at this 42 or, or 43.35 that might get in the way of that. And we've also got the fact that we've got a 10, 20, and 50-day moving average all declining, which, again, I'm going to say uh, is guilty till proven innocent. So we've got all these mixed messages from the market. When we get mixed messages like that, um, you know, I like to say that defense wins the game. And now's the time to be defensive. Now's the time to cut back your share size, to make sure that when you have a loss, you take it immediately, no delaying, no waiting, and uh, you know, just overall reduce your risk because there is no certain trend in here. And, uh, you know, again, tomorrow's probably a good day not to trade. The S&P 500, kind of the same story here. We saw that uh, sell-off on when, uh, Tuesday. A recovery on Thursday that did come with heavier volume, so that's one bullish piece of the puzzle. But the bearish pieces of the puzzle here are a declining 10, 20, and 50 day moving average. So we've got just a lot of mixed messages being sent from this market right now. Uh, I think, though, getting back above this 141.75 or so could take some, some sellers off, uh, catch some sellers off guard, and maybe we get a move higher up towards that 50 day moving average. Overall, though, to me, it's just not very clear, and that means it's time to stay on the sidelines. Uh, not stay on the sidelines, but just be more selective in your stock purchases. And as far as the indices go here, with th there's really no clear advantage to being long or short unless you're trading off the shorter-term time frames, like the two-minute time frame. If we look at uh, the two-minute time frame, you can see that starting yesterday afternoon, we had you know all these moving averages lined up. We saw this nice series of higher highs and higher lows that continued uh, through this morning, and then that was broken right here. We had the moving averages crisscrossing. That represents indecision, and it looked like it was going to break down. It quickly recovered and just kind of coasted into the uh, close here. And we'll look at the cues on that same time frame as well. Same same picture here on the two-minute time frame for the cues. We had this little uh, shakeout here, followed by a recovery, and then it just drifted into the afternoon. So. Um, no clear reason to do anything 
aggressively long or short in here. We've got the mid caps that are, you know, just chopping around. We've got a 50-day moving average still advancing in the mid caps, so that's a little bit more bullish. So perhaps it's just that these markets need to correct a little bit further through time, and it's going to be more of a stock picker's environment. I'm not going to post another video this evening, uh, but, but next week I'm going to start posting more videos with stock ideas. Uh, I'm not going to be posting, you know, a half dozen ideas a day. I'm going to try and be more selective and uh, remember to change the parameters as market conditions dictate on those trades. The semiconductors it looked like they were recovering for a couple days, showed some relative strength. They're just back in the middle of this dumb range that we've been observing for the last six or seven months. So there's no real clear advantage in there. And then, you know, we have been looking at this QID as a potential long. Uh, it looked like a good trade on on uh, Tuesday as it broke past that 56.50 level that we were watching as resistance and, and made for some nice profits. But this is why it's a trader's market. This is, you know, when we have this kind of indecision, you've got to be able to uh, move quickly with the market before your profits uh, evaporate, which they did in this QID. And we saw that breakdown. And today, you know, just a whole bunch of nothing going on.